Hey guys, it's Liddy here, and today I'm going to be talking about Tenacious Resin by Cyrotech. So, let's get started. Alright guys, so welcome back. Cyrotech sent me their awesome Tenacious Resin. Now, if you don't know what this is, this is some flexible resin. It is um, basically the resin version of TPU, um, and it is so awesome, and I had so much fun testing it out and just experimenting with this awesome resin and creating flexible models that I'm super excited to show you guys. So without further ado, let's get right into the video and I hope you enjoy it. Alright, so once you have your files on your USB stick, just plug it into your resin printer, simple as that, and then turn it on. Again, I'll be using the Creality um, LD002R resin printer that Creality sent me. Um, so it's on, you heard the beep. I'm just going to take off the top here and then we can fill it with our resin. So again, of course, this is our Tenacious Resin from... Cyrotech. Before you put it in your printer, um, in your vat, make sure you kind of shake it up a little bit, not too vigorously to create so many bubbles, but just enough to make sure that everything is mixed and completely um, mixed together before you put it on your printer. So it's good now. I'm going to open it up, but before I do that, you, you want to make sure you put some gloves on. Again, I use nitro gloves. Um, I've mentioned this in my other videos. Uh, I don't really like the latex gloves, and I've been told that it goes through the latex glove, so I just use nitro. Um, so all you got to do is crack it open. Sometimes there's this little lid thing. It, sometimes on my other bottles, it stays in here, but you just have to pop it open. And also make sure you have eye protection on and a mask, but I know that Cyrotex resins don't smell. Um, but if you want to be uh, cautious, make sure you wear a mask. So everything is clean here. There's nothing in my vat. And I'm just going to pour this in here. So as you can kind of see, it is a little bit like a greenish tint to it. But it is still very clear. Um, and once you dump it out, just put your cap back on in here. You can also wipe this um, the bottle or the mouth of the bottle off. Sometimes I don't, and then it just starts dripping all the way down and just leaves a mess. So if you want to make sure you stay clean, just clean that off. And that is basically it. Now I'm going to put the top back on of the printer. And because we have the file already loaded, all I have to do is go to print and find my file. So this is named Flexible Resin Test Prints. There's a couple prints on there, and I will show you guys that, obviously, when they're done printing. So, we'll press print, and now it will start the print. It, I will let it go for seven hours, and then we will check out um, the prints when they're done. Alright, so the prints are done. took about seven hours to print, and here they are um, on the build plate. As you can see, uh, they are, again, like a yellowish, clear um, color. They are, they are very opaque. Uh, what I'm going to do is um, put these, or scrape them off with the spatula that came with my printer, and um, I'm gonna pop them into my uh, cleaning solution, just the IPA bucket that I have, uh, that I showed in one of my other videos, but here it is, and we can already see, even without it being cured, that it, it flexes. So um, let me just get these off, and then we can pop them into the IPA. Alright, so once the parts are off of the build plate, I'm going to put them in my IPA again. And as you can see, this is the base of the supports, and it is very, very pliable. Um, so let's just hope that overall this stuff works how it should after it's cured. So I'm going to put them into the IPA, the rubbing alcohol. And then I'm going to put it in my little um, cleaner thing back there it vibrates the bottom to agitate the old resin off and then I will pop it into a bucket of um, hot water and then cure it how I normally do with my black light flashlight. I just want to pop in here um, I was just editing the video and I forgot to mention that I did um, as you can see when I'm cleaning the parts off when I first take them off the build plate the resin or the IPA I have is very like milky color and very dirty. I actually eventually do just clean the prints um, a little bit with that rubbing alcohol and then I put them in a cleaner uh, container of rubbing alcohol and I eventually cure them 
um, in a bath of rubbing alcohol because I was having a problem with getting sticky parts even after cleaning them and then curing them. So if you're having that problem with this resin, definitely try curing your prints in a clean, uh, fresh batch of IPA or rubbing alcohol and you will probably get a better result just like I did once I did that. Now back to the video. All right, so I'm going to take it out of my container that it was curing in. I'm actually going to tear off this uh, or these supports, but as you can see, um, they're literally just like rubber. So I can take them off. Now, looking at it, I probably should have taken them off before curing, but if they um, come off, then that'll be okay. But I probably should have taken them off. And if you hear that, um, like, ripping noise, it's actually, um, the Creality, uh, resin printer printing again. So I'm going to print another, a lattice cube to show you guys how flexible this stuff is. So I printed this tire. Now this tire is, was just an example. Um, people have printed rubber, um, tires before. And this one isn't squishy like some are, probably because it's the wrong model. But what I have noticed about this resin is it's it's flexible, as you can see here. Like this is this is just how the print is, um, or the material is. Like I could just keep bending it, and it's not gonna break. And I can twist it. Um, it just feels like kind of like a rubber um, bouncy ball. So like I can push my nail into this, kind of, and it just comes back right away. So it's got like that rubber feel to it I can actually take my rubber gloves off and feel what the actual yeah so it feels like um like a rubber like a rubber ball um so this is the tire it doesn't squeeze but again with the lattice cube i'll show you um how squeezable it is and this is just an, another stick that i do for test prints um and as you can see i can bend it and it's not even snapping. So it's really weird. It's like TPU um, filament, but obviously in resin form. So if I bend it enough, I can deform it, but it can kind of go back to its normal state, just like this one. But it's really awesome and um, super flexible, definitely. All right, so I have a bunch of prints printed and I actually did print a couple more than I showed um, just before you watch this clip. Um, and one of them was a lattice cube. I did uh, mention that I was going to print that, but unfortunately I had some problem as you can see here. Um, it is not an actual lattice cube. I don't know what was wrong. I was actually having a lot of problem with it um, fitting to or flattening on the bed. Um, and I kept getting some extra um, prints forming just like in the built in the vat. So I actually um, eventually did poke a hole in my vat. So I cleaned out all the resin. I put a new FEP sheet or film um, in my vat. And then I printed some more. And after that, everything was great. So that was really the only problem I actually had with this resin. But as you can see, this um, print looks very clear. And I, I feel like the thinner the print is, the more clear it is instead of yellow, like I mentioned before. Um, but I did want to show that I printed a um, wheel again, and um, I actually forgot to put holes in it because it is hollow. It has about a millimeter thick wall, I believe I set it to. Um, but again, uh, I didn't put it, I didn't put holes in it, so it wasn't hollow. So I had to put holes to drain the old resin out so that I could get it all cleaned out with rubbing alcohol and then cure it properly. And as you can see here, I can squish it, which is this is just super cool. And I actually couldn't. Um, squish this when uh, when it wasn't cured for some reason it was just really weird how this stuff works so once I cured this um, completely it eventually as you can see became very um, flexible and again here with the little stick that I made it's really like a rubber um, it's not like a plastic and then once again with this piece that I do for testing um, it is fully cured, but it's just, again, the flexibleness of this um, material. And then I also did a bigger uh, wheel here. But as you can see here, it um, is basically falling apart because I made the walls probably like 0.2 millimeters thick, and that was way, way too thin. Um, I learned that on after I tried to squish it, and it just fell apart. So to get the flexibleness 
like this one. Um, you just really have to change your thickness of your walls. I believe one millimeter is good enough. One millimeter probably would have been just fine for this. I just really wanted to show the flexibleness. And as you can see, I can really just crumple this whole thing up and it um, sort of goes back to how it's supposed to be. Uh, and then another closer look at these two prints here. After I cured this one, it actually uh, became a little harder than being able to put my nail in it. And then again, this one is just a completely solid wheel. And this is where the support was on it, and it wasn't very good. So I definitely recommend um, cleaning your support off before you cure your prints, um, just because you won't get a very nice finish on it. Or just try not to use supports. But there's definitely probably a way around uh, getting this weird artifact from your supports. Definitely try to orientate your part a little bit differently. Um, and then I did one last print. Now this was supposed to be a lattice cube, but it's obviously a little bit different than that. Um, it is this cube here. And what I want to do is show you guys how strong this material is. So I'm actually going to be putting the camera on the floor and stepping on this and seeing how much flex the print actually gets. Um, and how strong it is, if it will hold me, and just, again, the the toughness of this material. Even though it is flexible, if you can print it 100% solid like this print is, then is it super strong? Um, and that will also take into accountability to can you mix this with other materials. For example, the blue resin that I reviewed, also from Sartec. Uh So uh, that will also probably be a different video, but... I'm going to show you guys right now the strength of this print right here. Alright, so you guys could see there how much this thing actually flexed, and it actually kind of deformed the print. It is slowly going back to how it originally was printed, um, but like say I pressed on it a little bit at an angle, then this whole thing would be kind of crushed at an angle, um, and it just deformed the print. I could see that after I picked it up after stepping on it. It's kind of crazy how um, much uh, force this can take in without actually ruining the model. Then again, it is a very um, strong model as it is, but I feel like if I would step on another printed piece like this out of normal resin, uh, it probably would have shattered more um, than this actually technically didn't affect the print at all. So this stuff is super strong, even though it is a flexible resin. All right, guys, so that is it for the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, now, all of the links to the resin and to the website to get your resin will be down below in the description. You can also get it on Amazon. I'm not sure which um, or ordering from which website is faster. But overall, the price on this material is very reasonable because of the ability you can get and of how much you get. Uh, for in each bottle. Um, it's just overall a great product and I think it's super awesome and definitely will be testing it out and using it to make some cool products. Uh, just I never imagined being able to test out a liquid that hardens into being flexible. It's just super cool and definitely new for me. Uh, again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about this material, please let me know down below in the comments. Again, you know if you are not new here that I love to comment back to you guys and talk to you down below in the comments. If you are new here, thank you so much for sticking through the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you subscribe. Hit that like button and definitely turn on that bell notification. It helps me grow my channel and get my videos out to other people. Thank you so much again for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.